Hello, I'm going to show you how I winter protect my jelly palm, my butia. Um, these ones are a little harder, but not too bad. Main thing you got to watch on these is the fronds don't like to bend up like the windmill palms do. So you kind of got to get it up there, but not pull it in real, real tight. As this gets bigger, I think I'm going to have a fun time getting it boxed up. Some of these fronds I'm going to cut off, like this one here, it's dead. So we'll just cut that off. I'm going to cut it off right here. Now you can see, I already pre uh, got the lights on it already. So those are already done. I'll probably cut this one off too. Cut that off. And then that's out of the way. But this is about two feet tall. I already put some mulch down to help it. And then I'll put the box on it. And put more mulch around the outside of the box just to help it insulate. There's probably, I don't know, 300 lights on it, maybe. Maybe not quite that many. But this will be the second winter for it. Here in Western PA. So I'm going to pause and get the box on, and you'll see it. Okay, I got the box on and I have it tied down. So we'll start with the box. I just do this triangle method on some of these smaller ones. I take black electrical tape and go around the outside a few times and that holds it together. You can see I got gaps in there, kinda. It's the same way on the big one and that one over there. They all have some gaps. I think they need the ventilation. I think if you make them too tight, then they can sweat in there and more of a chance of mildew. That's just a personal opinion. I don't know if it's fact or not, but so, then I put these stakes in the ground. I got three of them. Kind of like planting a tree. You want to stake it three ways for a year so it can root in. This way, this will hold it three ways for the wind. So, got that. What I don't have in here yet is the thermo cube. I'll plug it in. And then I'll shove it down inside, down in the center. And then I'll have a cord go and plug it in. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just show you how I do the lid. I just have a piece of lid, just like this. And all I do is set it on the top, just like that. And then I have one of these pavers, one foot square paver. And I sit that on top to hold the lid down. That one's small enough, I probably won't tape it down. Some of the bigger ones, I'll take a wrap of tape and go around the corner and then go around the outside and hit a couple other corners. Um, but like I said, this is the second year for it. And so far it's doing good, but like I said, those fronds, they're kind of hard to tie down, um, tie up, excuse me. They don't want to bend as well as the windmill palms do. So that's that. It's pretty simple when they're this size. A few stakes, tie them up, um, spray them down with liquid seven before you do all that. Maybe a fungicide. Um, but pretty simple for now anyways. As it grows, it's going to be a challenge. Like my windmill palm there, you can see. So... Okay, that's uh, protecting a butia jelly palm in western Pennsylvania. Zone 6A, 6B. Most winters were 6B. So if we would take out a couple weeks, we'd probably be a zone 7. But Okay, there you have it. Jelly palm protection in western Pennsylvania. Thanks. Thanks for watching.